Hello, I'm Roslyn Law. I'm a consultant clinical psychologist and I work at the Anna Freud National Centre for Children and Families. And there I work particularly with adolescents, uh, many of whom have experienced depression. And so today I'm going to talk a bit about depression during adolescence, which I think is a really important problem and difficulty for young people for us to become aware of and try and understand. What we know about adolescent, the adolescent period is there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in biology with puberty coming on and also a lot of brain development happening that is just essential for future functioning. 15, 20 years ago, we didn't know anything about this. We didn't know how important it was. But it helps us to make sense of why mental health difficulties across the lifespan are most often started by, by teenage years. So about 50% of lifetime mental health difficulties, if we take dementia out of that picture, they've started by the time a young person's 14 75% have started by the time they're 24. So this is a time to really pay attention to any of these vulnerabilities and trying to get support and help in there as efficiently, as effectively as we can. So here are some specific tips, especially for school staff who might have some concerns with young people that they're working with, perhaps wondering if depression's part of the picture. There are quite a few things you can do that are helpful. That's the good news. The first thing I would say is don't put everything down to being a teenager. Um, teenagers get a bit of a bad rep. They are misconstrued at times as being lazy or being self-centered. And actually, if we understand what's going on for them from a developmental point of view, what's happening in their brains right now and in that period of time, what we understand is they're doing really essential work to equip them for future life. Another really important thing is to appreciate that adolescence lasts for longer than we think. It isn't just teenage years. We're looking at probably from about 11, around about the onset of puberty, right the way through to the early 20s. That's how long it takes for all of these developmental processes to actually happen. So the part of the brain that will help a young person say, is that a good idea? Should I really do that? It doesn't get fully wired up until their early 20s. If you can hold that in mind, it can sometimes help us to, to manage our confusion about why, what were they thinking of? Why did they do that? And actually it's because what they were thinking of or why they did that didn't occur to them quite a bit later. It takes the long route around their brain compared to adults. In terms of how you might be with a young person just to help support them, let them know if you've noticed a change, something's different, it's not quite what they're normally like. Um, let them know you care and that you're interested and that you're available if they want help. But you have to be prepared to get no response the first, second, fifth time you offer that. It can take a lot of building up to, to talk about your feelings. So letting a young person know that you're available, but giving them the autonomy, the, the freedom to come to you when they feel able to ask for it is really important. If you can respond when a request comes to you, try to, to be quick in that response, but it's not always possible. So if you can't immediately listen to a young person who wants to talk or let you know what's going on for them, that's okay, that's not going to be um, the end of you being helpful. Just make sure you make a plan to come back and talk to them when you're both available. Let them know that it's important and that you're going to listen. When they do come, sometimes, particularly if depression is in the picture, they might have things to talk about that you might find a bit alarming. If they're thinking of self-harm or if they're thinking perhaps of whether their life's worth living, it's easy to panic. It's easy to want to jump in and fix something. But what young people tell us over and over again is somebody who can just stay calm, who can listen, who can be interested in what that's like when that's one of the options on the table is really, really helpful. So managing that and having support for yourself to manage those worrying discussions. 
In school, there might be certain times that it's important just to keep an eye on what's happening. So there are certain things research has told us. We know, for example, and this was quite a surprising finding, that bullying in early teens, maybe around about 13, is one of the best predictors we've got for teenage depression later in teenage years. So looking out for that, not just managing it at the time, but looking in the years that follow for the consequences of that early experience of being pushed outside the group. If you are concerned about the things that a young person is talking to you about and you feel that this isn't something that, that just talking through and giving some support can help with, then it is important. Go to your colleagues at school who are trained in terms of mental health support, school counsellors or psychologists. And it can be important to discuss with a young person how their parents are involved or informed about these problems. We know from conversations with parents that sometimes that's the first time they've become aware of the difficulty because they may have thought it's down to being a teenager as well. So finding a way for the team to work together in a constructive way to support and involve a young person in, in making choices and being part of the choices about the help they receive can be an invaluable thing that you provide for them. So for any more support or information, please join the free Schools in Mind network at the Anna Freud National Centre for Children and Families.